Thank you. We now turn to our first item of business, which is topical questions. And we start with question number one from Mary Fee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Justice last met the Scottish Police Authority and what issues were discussed. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. I have regular meetings with the Chair of the Scottish Police Authority and meet the Board approximately once a year. We discuss a range of key strategic issues in policing. Mary Fee. As the Cabinet Secretary is aware, last week the Justice Subcommittee on Policing published its report on the governance of the SPA. That report says that the committee does not have confidence that the current chair is the best person to lead the board. This follows similar concerns from the Public Audit Committee. We know that under the current leadership of Andrew Flanagan, public meetings were held in private, critical letters hidden from board members, and we have heard the disgraceful ousting of now former board member Moy Alley. Andrew Flanagan was appointed chair of the Scottish Police Authority to improve openness and accountability. He has failed. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me, agree with the Subcommittee on Policing and agree with his own backbenchers that Mr Flanagan's position is untenable and that he should go? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I am conscious of the issues which have been raised by the Subcommittee uh, on Policing, which uh, provided us with a copy of the report last uh, Thursday. And as I am sure the Member will recognise, we will give very careful consideration to that report uh, and the findings of that report, alongside the issues which have been highlighted by the Public Audit Committee as well, uh, and to take those issues into account alongside the other evidence which both our own Subcommittee received and also the Public Audit Committee received in looking at these matters. Once we have uh, considered all of these matters, we will then be in a position where we can then uh, set out very clearly uh, the government's response to these matters and our position on the position of the chair of the SPA. However, I'm sure the member would recognise that it is important that ministers and the government do consider these issues carefully. And I can give the member an absolute assurance that we will consider the findings of her committee, subcommittee's report very carefully in arriving at the Scottish Government's position on this matter. Mary Fee. Andrew Flanagan has lost the confidence of MSPs from all parties, including government backbenchers. It is clear his position is untenable. It seems Mr Flanagan and the Justice Secretary are the last two people to see that. We need a drastic overhaul of how the SPA is run, and this must start with the very top of the SPA board. We need leadership from the Scottish Police Authority, but we don't have that at the moment. If Andrew Flanagan isn't going to do the right thing and resign, then we need leadership from the Scottish Government. The Scottish Government approved Andrew Flanagan's appointment as chair. If the Cabinet Secretary won't th uh, withdraw that now, then I simply ask, what will it take for the Government to take action? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I say to the member, I've given an assurance that we will consider the findings of her subcommittee's report, and once we've uh, had the opportunity to consider that in detail, we'll then be able to respond to these matters. Uh, alongside that, considering the issues which have been raised by the Public Audit Committee as well, uh, and I'm sure the member would recognise it's important that ministers do give thorough consideration to these issues in coming to a determination on these matters. On the wider issue around the SPA structure and the way in which it operates, uh, the member will be also aware that I have uh, asked HMICS to bring forward the particular aspect of their inspection, their statutory inspection, which was due to take place later this year, to look at the issue of governance. And HMICS have already agreed to do that specifically and intend to publish a report uh, by the 22nd of June on these issues. And a point which was highlighted by the Public Audit Committee and in their letter to me welcomed the decision that I made in asking for this work to be undertaken. Uh, so it's important that we do consider these issues and to reassure you that we are considering these issues very carefully and we want to make sure uh, that they are being appropriately addressed. On the wider issue around uh, SPA uh, uh, governance and the SPA uh, structure aspect, um, uh, there is no doubt there are aspects of the way in which the SPA has operated over the last four years uh, that have not worked as well as they should have. There are areas where I believe it could make further improvements. I've been very clear about the need for the SPA to ensure that it operates in an open and transparent manner. And I've repeatedly made that clear as a priority in the way in which it undertakes its uh, processes in considering matters. There is no doubt that there have been improvements in the way in which the SPA has been operating. So, for example, as was led at the evidence given to the Public Audit Committee, the way in which it's considered issues such as C3, the way in which we now have the relationship between the SPA 
and the executive team within Police Scotland has improved significantly as well, and also the way in which it's taken forward work around uh, developing uh, the 2026 uh, strategy has shown clear improvements that have been made. But notwithstanding that, I recognise the concerns which have been raised uh, by our own subcommittee and by members of the Public Audit Committee, and I can give the member an assurance that they will be considered very carefully and that the Government will then come to a position once it's considered all of these matters. Douglas Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, the evidence is very clear from the Justice Subcommittee to the Public Audit Committee, from MSPs of all parties and indeed from former board members. Andrew Flanagan's time as Chair of the Scottish Police Authority should be over and is certainly untenable to continue. Yes or no, does the Scottish Government continue to have full faith in Andrew Flanagan as Chair of the Scottish Police Authority? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I've just said to the member, we will consider the findings of uh, both the committee's uh, work in this particular area and then come to a decision on this issue. I'm surprised that a member who uh, is apparently a spokesperson on justice would not want to ensure that we go through a due process in considering these issues. Uh, and it's important that government ministers give careful consideration to these issues in coming to a decision. And that's exactly what we'll do. And once we have completed that process, we'll then set out a position on this matter. John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet, it's certainly my personal view that Mr Flanagan's position is untenable and, and he must go. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that we must have vibrant and diverse public boards. Can you indicate whether in your response to both the committee reports you'll consider the impact that his conduct has had on the likelihood of being able to recruit women and ethnic minority people to these boards, please? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think the member may raise a very important issue because this government is very clear about the need to make sure that we have greater diversity on our public uh, bodies. I recently made some further appointments to uh, the SPA and I've also already uh, written to the chair of the SPA in recent weeks highlighting the need to get uh, greater diversity on uh, the board, uh, which is extremely important. Uh, and that's why it's uh, also extremely important that when ministers are considering these types of issues, that we do have a due process that we go through in considering uh, these types of concerns when they're being raised in order that we don't dissuade people from thinking about applying for uh, appointments to public boards uh, when these issues are being raised with uh, ministers. But I can give the member an absolute assurance, I'm very clear, uh, not just with the SPA, but any boards within uh, the justice setting, that they need to make sure that they're doing everything possible in order to increase diversity uh, within their membership and that they should be looking to take forward proactive measures that can assist in achieving that. So, for example, uh, it's not always necessary uh, to go for direct appointments if there is no space to actually make direct appointments. But what you can do is you can also second members uh, to help them support the work of public bodies that can help to encourage greater diversity, give people experience of the work that that particular board may be undertaking uh, with a view to applying for a, a place on the board at some point in the future. So, as a government, we are very clear about the need to get greater diversity and looking at legislation in order to help to uh, facilitate that. And I'm very clear as Justice Secretary that in all boards within the justice sector, we need to see greater diversity. And uh, recent track records on appointments to boards will demonstrate that actually we are making significant progress in increasing the number of uh, women in particular uh, on our justice boards. And I'm determined to make sure we continue to drive that forward. Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will have heard the statement from Andrew Flanagan at the Justice um, Subcommittee last week. Uh, there's no doubting it was extremely contrite. He did offer an apology, but I think the point that was being made by a number of members was that the, uh, the position that he held was undermined um, and that the actual SPA itself would be inhibited in moving forward uh, for as long as he remained chair. Given that at the most recent SPA meeting uh, last week, again, concerns were being raised uh, by board members about the publication in advance of, of papers. Does he not believe that the culture shift that we all want to see in the SPA uh, will not be possible until there is a change at the top? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, the member will be aware that the SPA uh, made, did make a decision at their board meeting on the 25th of May to move their committees back to a presumption on the basis that they would take place in public and also that papers would be published in advance. And I've been very clear with the SPA about the need to make sure that they're open and transparent about the way in which they uh, conduct their uh, business. The member uh, will also recognise, though, that it has been highlighted the need for private space in some of the SPA's work, given the sensitive nature uh, and the confidential nature of some of the information which they are provided with, particularly where it relates to operational matters for Police Scotland, uh, and a safe space needs to be provided for those discussions and for the sharing of that information uh, to also to be able to uh, take place. So, notwithstanding that, though, 
uh, is that my view is the presumption in favour of uh, subcommittees and uh, board conduct taking place in a, a public forum is the right one uh, and the approach that should be taken. And what have I, uh, and that's why I've also asked uh, HMICS to bring forward the early part of their statutory inspection that was due to take place in the autumn of, the, of this year uh, to look specifically at the issue of governance within the SPA. And that work has already started by HMICS uh, and will report by the 22nd um, of June. And I've got no doubt will help to support looking at what further measures the SPA need to put in place. But I uh, 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 do recognise the need to make sure the SPA are operating in an open and transparent manner. And I've been very clear with them uh, over an extended period of time to ensure that the processes and mechanisms that they have in place are able to deliver that effectively. I'm Jackie Bailey. We know that the chair of the Scottish Police Authority did not tell his board about a letter from Derek Penman advising of a forthcoming inspection. Now we understand that on a previous occasion, Mr Flanagan did not share an advice note on forensic services with the board. Does the Cabinet Secretary believe that this is a further example of a lack of transparency? And does the chair of any public body behaving in this way meet the Scottish Government's own guidance to those serving on public boards? Cabinet Secretary. Um, uh, as uh, I think the member will be aware is that Andrew Flanagan has accepted that he should have passed that note on uh, to the other members of his board and accepts that there was an error made on his part which is unacceptable uh, and we need to ensure that chairs of any public bodies are passing on the relevant information to other members of the board in order to allow them to make, come to an informed position on matters when they are also being discussed. Uh, the issue around the advice note is one that also the chair has accepted it should have been passed on to uh, board members and again is a matter which we will consider uh, in looking at this matter in the whole. Uh, but I want to reassure members uh, that the government will come to a position on this matter but it is appropriate that we do consider all of the facts and all of the information that have been provided in part for the very reason that was highlighted by uh, John Finney about individuals being attracted to stand uh, and uh, to work on our public bodies uh, to ensure that there's a due process that ministers and government will go through in considering these matters and then coming to a decision. A failure to do so, my concern would be, is that it would actually dissuade people from being prepared to actually uh, go into public appointments and we want to avoid that from happening. And that's why we will consider these matters very carefully and in a detailed way and we'll then come to a decision on this issue. Thank you. Question number two, Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government, in light of the disruption over the bank holiday weekend arising from the MA, M73, M74 improvement projects, whether it will confirm the completion date of the work and provide details on how Transport Scotland plans to reduce the level of disruption. Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown. Uh, following on from the opening of the new M8 motorway in April and the M74 Wraith underpass in February, the final sections of the new and improved M8, M73 and M74 motorways will open fully across the M8, M73, M74 project over the coming days. More traffic management is being removed across the project each day with the motorways expected to be fully open uh, by the end of this week. As is usual for projects of this nature, the contractor will now focus on necessary finishing and snagging works and local and road improvements which have been held back until the new roads were available. These works will continue until at least September but will not affect peak time traffic flows. Margaret Mitchell. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response and I would be very surprised if by the end of this week we could properly uh, um, describe the roadworks as having been completed. But what I can say that in the meantime, there are still major problems with the lack of or inadequate signage, which is an issue I raised with the Minister for Transport in February. His response was that he'd look into the issue and since then nothing has been done, in particular to indicate which lane to take for the new East Kilbride underpass layout. In addition to this, the delays commuters are experiencing have been exacerbated by new road configurations and totally inadequate signage for diversions. As a result, countless numbers of drivers have found themselves completely lost with all the chaos that ensues. Furthermore, the delays and chaos are being added to by a lack of coordination of the works carried out by Transport Scotland and those by the local authority. Will the Cabinet Secretary now categorically commit to look at these vexing issues with a, a view to, to finding an effective solution? Cabinet Secretary. 
Uh, can I say that I've responded to every letter that's been sent to me by the member. If there's one that's been missed out, I'm happy to look at that. But I've had a number, as she knows, of representations from both her and other members, and I've sought to respond to all of those. And as I say, we'll look to any outstanding ones to make sure that happens. Just to say, I didn't say that the roads be completed by the end of next week. That's not what I said. I said the roads, the major roads, will be open fully, is what I'd said. The roads, as I went on to say, the uh, snagging works and necessary finishing the local road improvements will continue until at least September, but they will not affect peak time traffic flows. It's also true to say that in a project like this, and let's just remind ourselves, half a billion pounds of work promised, I think, in relation to the Wraith uh, interchange by the Tories over 30 years ago. It's taken this government to do that. For the first time, we have a motorway between Edinburgh and Glasgow the whole way. It's taken this government to do that. Both of those opened ahead of schedule. But at this stage in the project, this is when roads have to be tied in, and it can cause disruption, for which I do apologise. Obviously, we do not want to see disruption happening. The contractors have tried very hard to do over the quieter period of the bank holiday, overnight as well, when they've done that. But in relation to the final point, if there's any further issues in terms of signage, any issues to which I've not responded to the member, I'm more than happy to look at that. Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Secretary, for that response. However, the impact of the improvement project doesn't stop with mere delays and potential chaos. It's also having a seriously worrying adverse effect on businesses in the Lanarkshire area. For example, a number of businesses in Baltimore and Addingston have contacted me about substantial loss of revenue, as a result of which a number of these businesses are closing are planning to close due to lack of footfall and cancellations. Some businesses are reporting a staggering 80% drop in turnover. And businesses in the Birkenshaw's trading estate in Addingston report having lost tens of thousands of pounds of turnover over the last few weeks as a result of the M8 no longer offering a turn-off to Addingston. Similar problems have been reported elsewhere in Motherwell, Hamilton and surrounding districts. In view of this, will the Minister undertake to join with me in meeting with these businesses to hear firsthand their concerns and to find a solution to mitigate the adverse impact that the project is having on their businesses and the local economy? Cabinet Secretary. As I've said previously, I'm more than happy to hear representations from the member if there's a letter that's not been answered. The issues which she's just raised, she also has raised with me and I've responded to them previously. If she has new issues, then perhaps uh, she could let me know and I'm more than happy to uh, look at those issues. But what I think is remarkable, and of course I don't deny for a second that there has been disruption. It's not possible to have, especially in the online sections of these roads, uh, these improvements, these long-awaited improvements without disruption to traffic. It's just simply not possible to do that. But what I do think is remarkable is not one word of congratulation from Margaret Mitchell yeah, and the Conservatives yeah, exactly. over a fantastic infrastructure project which yeah. is going to bring major benefits to the Central Scotland motorway network. More, more, I don't more. deny there has been disruption. Of course there has. There will always be in relation to these projects. But this is a tremendous project which really should have been done decades ago. And once again, it's fallen to this government to put, bring forward the improvements. The M8 now being a motorway the whole way between Edinburgh and Glasgow. You would think that Main Street Scotland would have had a motorway before. Now it's not happened. The Wraith interchange, which I've had many representations, people saying, it's dramatically reduced their journey times. Not one word of that from the Conservatives. Of course, I'll look at the issues that Margaret Mitchell has raised, but perhaps just once the Tories could commend this government and the contractors for the work done in bringing forward this fantastic yeah. project. Richard Lyle. Can I uh, say to the Cabinet Secretary that both these roads are in my constituency, and I was on the M8 and N74 on Friday and travelled to Glasgow Airport. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that f this £500 million contract, as I would suggest, coming near to an end, with mainly landscape work to be done, can he personally communicate my thanks to SRP and to Transport Scotland for dealing with my constituents' needs timelessly? And most of the emails that have likely been sent to Margaret Mitchell have also came to me, and I have forwarded them on to him. So can I personally thank you for the work you've done and also for the fencing that you're putting up at St John the Baptist School, which was long overdue and was not going to be done, but because of your work and the Transport uh, Minister's work, it's now going to be done. Thank you. I'm not sure there's a question in there, Minister, but if you wish to 
<laughs> Briefly reply. Well, can I, just, uh, it's an important point that uh, Richard Lyle has raised many of the same issues that Margaret Mitchell has raised, and I've sought to respond to them as well. And in relation to the M74, of course, this doesn't include the extension to M74, another long-delayed project which has brought major benefits to the west of Scotland right the way through to the airport. So uh, I'm glad that Richard Lyle could at least acknowledge that there have been problems, but there's a major benefit from these infrastructure projects. And Polly McNeill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I would like to associate my remarks with Dick Lyle. And as the Cabinet Secretary knows, I'm full of praise for the project. I think it's a wonderful project and it should be praised. And for all the work that's been done, I know it's the biggest project in Europe. But I, I just would like to just um, ensure that the Cabinet Secretary is aware that I think what most people who use these roads believe that there's just a lack of information. That's the only weakness. And I think it's only yesterday someone wrote to me and said that they were queuing up for hours um, at midnight um, on the E8. And I just wanted to make sure the Cabinet Secretary was aware of that. I think the weaknesses in the lack of information and diversion, if it wasn't for that, I think people would feel a lot happier. But I don't want to detract in any way from the project, which I think is to be commended. How much is the question there either? Hey, can I thank uh, Polly McNeill for her remarks? And also say it's not actually the largest project, even in Scotland. The uh, AWPR is uh, £750 million, pounds, but it is long awaited. I do acknowledge the point that she makes about the uh, disruption that's been caused, and that the very fact that the example that she gave, and gave happened at night is because they do seek to close these roads at the times when there's least traffic on them. And I do acknowledge there's also been issues with signage and communication, which I have raised a number of times with the contractor. I would say just we're coming to the very final part of this, which is when a lot of very quick changes have to be made in order to tie in the roads. But I will pass on again both the remarks of Margaret Mitchell and Polly McNeill to the contractor for this last final few days. Thank you. And that concludes topical questions.